Hey guys, if you're looking to get a quick update around all the new features, enhancements, and changes in Microsoft 365 from this past month, stay tuned because in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the major highlights that you don't wanna miss. Before we get started, just a quick introduction. My name's Nick, I'm a Microsoft MVP. Been creating content around Microsoft and the SMB space here on my channel, T-365, which you can check out at T-365.com. Let's go ahead and dive in here now, starting with Microsoft Teams. Okay guys, before we dive in here, just a quick reminder, I do supplement these videos with a blog post down below in the video description that includes more helpful links about these announcements, video tutorials, things like that. So be sure to check that out after you're done watching this video. Getting into it here though, we're gonna start off with Microsoft Teams as we usually do. This first announcement I'm pretty excited about is actually a live chat capability that's gonna be included in your Microsoft 365 business plans that you can access here as an admin. You can find this today actually by going to Teams, looking in the apps and finding the admin app, not actually live chat, don't search for live chat. I actually did that and had a hard time of actually finding this at first, but it's the admin app and you'll find in the navigation there that there is a live chat component that you can click on and set this up. But this is giving you the ability to set up live chat potentially on your website and that flows back into Teams where users can chat um, and manage all of those chats and see what's coming through in a single location. So I might do a separate video on this just to deep dive and do a demo so you can see more of what that's like. But this pretty cool feature coming out in January, late January, so by the time you're watching this, it should be GA in your tenant as well. Hey guys, speaking of updates, if you haven't checked out cloudcapsule.io yet, be sure to check out our new website. We just redesigned that here. This is a tool that I built that allows you to perform automated security assessments against a Microsoft tenant. You can run a free assessment on a tenant and in minutes you get back the security report, it provides a lot of deep data and also maps to popular frameworks and baselines like the CIS controls. So if you're interested and want to run a free assessment on your tenant, be sure to check out cloudcapsule.io and I'll link that here in the description of this video. Next one here is related, another cool feature for SMS for calling plans. So if you're using a Teams calling plan, this is giving you SMS chat support. Today it's restricted to region of US and Canada, but this is really cool because it gives users the ability to send and receive SMS text in Teams directly. And this is not turned on by default. So as an admin, you have to go in the Teams Admin Center to enable it. This will happen mid-February and be complete by late February. Next one here is just a friendly filter that you can now use for tag mentions. This is the app mention functionality you can see here in this screenshot. And this is giving you a quick way to identify all the chats, channels, group chats that you've been in where you've been tagged. Maybe it's something you're following up on. This will happen mid-February and be complete by late February. Next one here is giving users the ability to edit your display name as part of a live meeting. This is something that you can do very easily as you can see here on the screenshot. The only thing I didn't like that I saw was that it puts your name as your edited name and then parentheses edited next to it in, a, in the actual UI after it's done. So a little clunky in my opinion to have that, but this as a clarification does not affect and change the name of the user within Teams as a whole, just for that one meeting. Timeline for this one is early April, It'd be complete by mid April. Next one here is a nice to have for giving users some direction on where a meeting recording was stored. You can see that here at the bottom of the screenshot here in the sense of the recording has been saved to this user's OneDrive. So this is giving users the ability to see where it restores, they can reach out potentially to get access. Timeline for this one will be early March and be complete by late March. Next two here are related to town halls, live events, and webinars. This first one's related to allowing presenters to moderate the Q&A. Previously, this was only available to organizers and now organizers can give presenters that capability to interact with the attendees there. And this will happen late February and be complete by early March. Additionally, here for these uh, live events or these webinars, things like that, you can see here in the screenshot, you can end the meeting for attendees and then allow the organizers and presenters to flow back into the green room to debrief after the event. These are features that I feel like are very common in other applications that do live events or webinars that Teams kind of catching up on. 
but hopefully that is more normalized over the future. This will happen mid-February and be complete by late February. If you're a team premium subscriber, you're gonna have a new admin experience that's kind of consolidating a few different admin portals for both you know, settings of the features you have available to you, as well as some reporting around the usage and the licensing that you have. This will be, and as you can see in that screenshot in the upper left corner, if you have Teams Premium, this will happen at the end of January as far as the start of the rollout be complete by early February. Next one here is just kind of a change to the default settings. And this is specifically around turning on transcription by default. And they're doing this really to try to help drive adoption into the AI types of tools that we see today between Teams Premium and Copilot, where you need transcription turned on to be able to get those AI generated summaries after the meeting is over. I did want to pay attention to this though, or call it out just because I feel like with AI, they're trying to drive so much adoption that they're going to end up turning on a lot of features by default that aren't necessarily secure. I'm not super worried about this one, but I think it's a trend that we have to pay attention to as time goes on. Timeline for this one's early February, be complete by mid-February. Shifting into Microsoft Intune here, this is one of those annoying UI updates, I feel like, where they're updating the naming convention that'll catch you off guard. And this is specifically in the app section of Intune. You can see a side-by-side -side comparison here in the screenshots. The left-hand side is how it looks today as of the time of this recording. The right-hand side is how it's gonna look afterwards. Very subtle, but the big change here that I see is around the app protection policies. They're just renaming it to protection and configuration. So just pay attention to that. You know, they, they've swapped it also just from an order perspective, at least in, in my environment from these screenshots. And then secondarily, you know, in the Android app section, this is how it looks today on the left. This will how it look in the future here, just more access to uh, kind of that global um, setting. So it is more consistent. I do think it's better but just be aware of that. This will start early February and be done by the end of the month. Shifting into the admin section here, a couple of announcements around Defender for Office 365. Have this licensing if you use something like Business Premium or it's an add-on license. This first one though actually is a feature that's only included in Defender for Office 365 Plan 2. So it's unfortunate because I think it's a pretty cool security feature. That would be another bolt-on license in the SMB plans and it is included in plans like E5. As an example, the Explorer section though is only part of that P2 licensing, but this is giving a new threat classification that's using some machine learning to take a look at some common um, types of classifications that we would see from phishing events as an uh, example there that you would wanna hunt for, which includes things as you can see in that screenshot like gift cards, invoices, payroll, uh, typically things that, you know, users are getting tricked into as part of those attacks. Timelines for this one's early January, be complete by late January. So if you do have a P2 license, might be able to see this in the Explorer section and also the Advanced Threat Hunting section moving forward. This other one's GA, if you're watching this video today for Defender for 365, very subtle. I think it's nice to have, you know, for admins there for a bunch of FAQ-like questions around the quarantine portal. So if you're in the quarantine portal within the security admin center, you'll be able to see a list of these questions that you might be getting as part of your help desk. GA today, so you'll be able to see that in the right-hand corner. Shifting to the last section here with Microsoft Copilot, um, the big announcement this past month was the introduction of a freemium model. Classic Microsoft though on the naming convention, they went from Microsoft Copilot to Microsoft 365 Copilot chat. Very confusing, hard to keep up with over time uh, as we keep doing this. But the big thing that was, you know, the change here is that they're actually introducing this freemium model for all Microsoft 365 subscribers. GA there on this, um, you can begin to use it there if you go to Microsoft or m365copilot.com as you can see here. Next one here is video creation in Copilot. This is, as you can see, if you go to that website I just alluded to, there's a visual creator agent that's listed there. This today primarily just creates images for you that you can generate from prompts, but they're gonna be introducing this video creation component here, which is leveraging you know, some stock footage and it'll basically assemble a whole video for you. This, the only asterisk to this, if you've used other tools to create videos like uh, Sora from OpenAI, it's actually just using a library of video content that Microsoft has and not actually generating it via AI. 
So I don't have high expectations, to be honest, uh, for this one. We'll see. I think it could be used greatly, you know, from a marketing or sales department perspective, mostly in the marketing side for, for content you're trying to create. This will happen mid-February, be complete by mid-March. If you're a OneDrive user and using Copilot, this is a cool feature, I think, here to be able to take notes, but also pull in context from other resources across your Microsoft ecosystem, like your Teams chats, your emails, you know, meetings you take, you've taken that might um, compose back into this that compose across multiple meetings, not just one. So it's pretty powerful. There's more uh, screenshots and information on my blog you can check out there. This is rolling out though, starting mid January, be complete by late March. Next couple here are just related to being able to infuse some data and you know really have accessibility quickly into some data where you're trying to chat and pull out information. First one here is related to SharePoint sites, which is pretty cool. You can search the document repositories. These are only SharePoint sites the user would have access to, and it's gonna pull up ones they've accessed recently by default, but they can still search for them um, within there, scroll down in that list. This will happen mid-February, be complete by late February. And then the second one here is maybe, you know, an example of this use case is you're wanting to cite a file to pull some notes out of, but maybe you don't remember the name or where it's located. This is giving that users that drop down or pull up of a explore. If they click on the OneDrive icon and this will explore, you know, from your OneDrive and also from uh, other SharePoint sites. So you can pull up files or folders that you would want to reference really quickly um, versus you know, in the past that when it first came out, you had to do a forward slash and then kind of type out things that you were looking for, which didn't lead to a lot of great discoverability if you didn't know what the full naming convention was. So this will happen mid-February, be complete by late February. And then the very last one here for Copilot is around Microsoft Purview. This is for admin specifically. They're giving you more granularity in the sense of your retention policies for different AI um, engines between Copilot um, and even Copilot Studio, where you're going to be building AI agents. So I like this just from a data governance perspective. This will happen mid-February, be complete by late February. Okay, guys, that's everything I had for you today. Definitely comment below with some of the features you're most excited about. And if you want to see these update videos each month, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I'll see you guys next week.